on this uh, blustery fall morning. Some announcements this morning before we begin our worship together. Um, if you have an announcement, of course, start making your way forward. <coughs> Looking at you folks at the jazz night table. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's start with the music director search update. We have the job posted. It's been posted in a number of places. We are awaiting uh, people to apply, so once we get those, we'll start interviewing. In the meantime, I think our, our band is doing a fantastic job, so thank you, band. Let's give them a shout out, yeah. <laughs> volunteer band is really doing an amazing job, so thank you all uh, for leading our, our worship 
music while we uh, do the search. We have our next anti-racism conversation today after worship. Uh, I think we're going to meet in room two, so it'll be a little easier to hear each other instead of in this big room. Um, so someone could, while I'm doing the stream things and uploading, someone could cart the TV down the room too. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. The second session of the REC Bible study will be Tuesday at 7 p.m. That'll also be in room two. Easy to remember, right? Um, if you did not make the first one, you can still come to the second one, but uh, there might be some references that you'll be like, what? But that's okay. We can catch you up. I think it'll be okay. So 7 p.m. this Tuesday. Uh, Rachel, do you have an announcement? Okay. Three announcements. All right. Good morning. Okay, so the first one is, um, if you saw out in the emails um, about there is a concert coming up, it is the Saturday after Thanksgiving. It's for King and Country. Um, if anyone is interested, please let me know by today, because um, obviously that's coming up very quickly. Um, but it is a 7 p.m. concert, and um, it is... I don't remember. <laughs> I should have brought that with me. At the Allstate Arena, I think? Sears Center. Sears Center. Was it Sears Center? I don't remember. The now. now. The Now. There we go. Thank you. Um, and I don't, I, ticket prices would depend on how many people and where we could get seats. So um, it was kind of ranging between like 60 and $90 or something like that. But it is a Christmas uh, concert for, it is um, the Drummer Boy. So that's that's that. So find me after service if you're interested, um, or text me, call me. You can email me, but I'm not very good at email, just forewarning you. <laughs> um, the other two things I have, uh, first, we are having a paint night again. Um, that is going to be here Friday, December 8th from 7 to 9. Um, it's $25 per person um, that gets paid to the instructor the night of. Um, there will be snacks and drinks provided, but if you want a different beverage, you may bring your own. Um, so there is a Google link in the email, otherwise I will also put a paper sign up out on one of the, probably the round table out there. Um, and then also we are doing in December, uh, Tuesday, December 19th, a cookie exchange. So sign up early <laughs> because the number of people that participate determines how many cookies we have to make. So it's kind of good to know that ahead of time. Um, and so that will be, that's going to be at my house on Tuesday, December 19th at, I put 7 p.m., but depending on who's doing it, we can kind of talk about it with work schedules and all that stuff. Um, so there is a Google link to sign up online as well, but I will also put a paper sign up out there as well. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Gretchen, you have an announcement? One announcement. Uh, the um, Christmas program, again, December 7th. I just looked it up. December 17th, I believe, is the day. It is. Um, we're going to do it during the sermon, uh, during church again. <laughs> um, and we're going, we're asking uh, if we can get some of the older kids to help out. Um, they would be allowed service hours to, uh, for both the practice and the uh, actual event. Um, they, we would like them to do like the storyline and, and probably, and then we're going to have the kids do the, the actual play part. Um, so if we could get some, if I could, anybody could let me know what, if they're interested and, and for both little kids and the older kids would be great. Uh, as soon as possible, we're going to start practices, maybe the day after Thanksgiving, which I know a lot of people won't be here for, but, um, for sure the following, uh, week we will start for, you know. We may do a little bit on that weekend. So um, pra most practices will be during um, Sunday school. So we won't be learning too much, too much Sunday school during that time. But please let me know. More the merrier. Thank you. That's the first Sunday after Thanksgiving, yes? The yes. First? Okay. Selected weekend. Of Got it. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Jonah and Sydney, I believe you have an announcement as well. Jazz Night is back. Um, it will be Saturday, December 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. here. We will have a wine pull and raffle baskets, and the raffle baskets will be up a week in advance. Jazz Night will help support youth group 
and this year's mission trip to New Orleans. Each ticket will be $25. Come join us for a fun night of jazz. All right, thank you. Very good. Jazz night, December 9th. All proceeds going to help the, the youth go to the National Youth Gathering in New Orleans. Okay. We will be, uh, in honor of Veterans Day, it was yesterday, we'll be having a time of blessing for our veterans in our usual uh, blessing spot in the worship, so after the sermon song. And remember, I've been here long enough that I know who you are. There's nowhere to hide. You have to come up here. But you don't have to say anything, okay? I, I think it's a fair compromise. But we want to bless our veterans and give thanks and pray for those who are currently serving, as this is a tumultuous time in our world, so prayer is certainly needed. Okay, any other announcements this morning? Okay, well, uh, our, our next speaker in the stewardship campaign, Growing in Generosity, Finding Our Future, uh, it was supposed to be someone else, but they had to cancel last minute. So guess what that means? You're stuck with me. Here we go. <clears throat> How long do I want to make this? No, I'm just kidding. All right. <clears throat> uh, I do want to start our, our time in talking about our stewardship campaign with a, a reading from Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations is uh, the, the artsy sequel to the book of Jeremiah. So instead of Jeremiah 2, we went with a more dramatic chapter or uh, title of Lamentation. So uh, this is from chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercy never comes to an end. They are created new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Like Lamentations, we've been through a lot, Living Waters. I was asked this week, uh, someone who was visiting, asking when I started, and I told them it was six weeks uh, and before the shutdown in 2020, and uh, at the time we didn't have an office because a car had gone through the wall, um, so we were all kind of huddled around a table in here with one Ethernet cord, uh, and, and then we all were, uh, had a pandemic, so it, a lot's happened, and yet God has continued to provide. We've had a lot of, of great ministry happen. We've had folks join us uh, in, this, in this mission, which is wonderful, and the good news in the uh, financial realm, as we plan for uh, the next year in our stewardship, is that we're about two years away from paying off our mortgage, which is very, yeah, come on, yeah, that's great news. Uh -huh. Yes, and that is possible because your giving has continued to exceed uh, the mortgage budget again this year, so if current trends right now, we're looking at about mm, December of 25, but if current trends continue next year, it'll be even earlier, so thank you for uh, giving to help us and the mortgage. I very much look forward to the day we get to burn that document. It's going to be fun. Um, <clears throat> this is, of course, a, a long, long time of, of faithful giving and of stewardship that has allowed this to be possible, but it will free up funds for us at Living Waters. It will provide us to have new opportunities for ministry that we have not been able to carry out so far. And so this year, the stewardship team was thinking that we needed to use this time that we have before that big day to plan of what we want to be as a congregation, where we want to go and what we want to do in our ministry. And so we had the Vision Summit in May, or no, May, who the February, February, feels like May. And um, we've been working on the feedback that this congregation gave us to carry out this mission to set us up for the best possible way to really hit the ground running in two years. Uh, so thank you for your feedback. What we have done so far, I was tasked with talking about our social connection, which is good because I run our social media and other things, so I'm more than happy to talk about that. The first thing I would say is we promise is made, promise is kept. The, all the short-term goals, including um, consulting with teams about utilization for space, including outside, inside, etc., new ways of, of presenting our property as an asset for ministry, Increased volunteer engagement in our ministry teams. We had a ministry fair. We resumed our stewardship talks. We're always looking for more people to help, though. So this is a continuing goal, but we have uh, succeeded in, in following the short-term uh, goals in that. Uh, and implementing our teams to use our space uh, differently. So these things have all been done, which is good. Uh, in addition, we have also updated the website. Uh, the Realm Reformation is underway. So some of those even medium-term goals we are working on as a staff and as a congregation. Working on planning uh, events, targets for specific groups, couples, families, kids, intergenerational, non-binary, etc. 
This is something that is a growing goals of ours as we discern new ministries. It's also something that we will be building as, again, we are looking at uh, having the mortgage paid off, but it'll give us more opportunities of what we specifically want to target in our outreach as a congregation. Uh, so your giving now supports that being possible both now and in the future. Educating our members on the importance of liking, following, as well as uh, search engine optimization. I'll do that right now. Like our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram, like our posts, share them, uh, and, and Google us, and it'll come up more. The more people that search Living Waters, the more it's going to come up. There's a, there's a Living Waters in Minnesota, and we want us to come up first, okay? That's, that's really the main goal there, okay? Um, let's see. Exploring options for social media, internship, and stipend for a student unafraid to try new ideas. I love that idea. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get that rolling. And then, of course, we have long-term goals that we are working on over the next couple years, uh, defining more of our outreach online uh, and social media and, and maybe perhaps more videos and such that are more current with the, um, we'll get the most views these days. Uh, looking at different worship opportunities as we continue to grow, which is a wonderful uh, goal we'd love to work on, and uh, looking at uh, making a, a gender-neutral bathroom as a way to be more inclusive in our social outreach as well. So in conclusion, connections are happening both in and outside our church family, but, but I do want to say we always want your feedback. Uh, this is not just the staff's mission. This is not just the pastor's mission. This is not just the council's mission. This is all of our mission that we share in Christ. Uh, so your feedback is invaluable. Often when people tell me things, I'm really glad they do because I had no idea because you all see things that I don't and vice versa. So please, this is our church together. This is our mission that we share in Christ. Uh, your feedback is essential for us, perhaps even reaching or, or dreaming up a new ministry that can really reach this community in a different way that we have not thought of yet. Uh, I do want to remind us that next week is our Pledge Sunday. So please discern how you will support us in the future, but not just with your financial pledges. I ask you to consider pledging your time, your talent, your feedback, your passion, your creative ideas, and inviting others to join us. In all these things, the future of Living Waters will be created anew. God will continue to provide out of all situations, just like we heard in Lamentations. God's mercy never comes to an end, but great is God's faithfulness. Thank you. Wow, thanks, Seth. That was great. Okay, uh, any other announcements this morning? And with that, please stand as you're able as we begin worship together with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for You. We are not faithful in using Your gifts. We forget the peace of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides us. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, has opened the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. And in Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illuminate our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is uh, from Amos chapter 5. You can find it on page 747 in the Bible under your chair. That's Amos chapter 5, beginning at the 18th verse. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The second reading is from Thessalonians 4, chapter... uh, chapter, (laughs) Verses 13 through 18. It's on page 960. Chapter 4, beginning at the 13th verse. We do not want to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, Through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. This is Matthew 15, 1 through 13. If you'd like to follow along, this is, can be found on page 806 in the Bible in the chair in front of you. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore. For you neither know the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. 
please be seated. I invite the kids up for the children's message this morning. And we're actually going to head back here. So do, be careful. Do not trip on this cord. Right over here. Right over here. Watch the cord. Very good. Oh, excellent. Extra safe. Okay. Anyone know what this is? Candle. Candle. A candle. Very observant. Um, do you think it's a special candle? Yes, why do you say that? So it has a cross on it. It got the lamb and another cross. Lots of symbols, right? When do you see this lit? At church? When? Specifically, like on a Tuesday afternoon? Or? Oh, at the start, right? Colby lit it this morning. And then when do we put it out? Hmm. Oh, at the end of worship. Okay, so this is lit during all of worship, huh? Yes, when the band starts playing, we're inviting everyone into worship. The, the candle is lit. Very good. So this is what's called the Christ candle, right? So it symbolizes um, that Christ is with us. When we are worshiping, we believe that God is present here. Not just, I mean, look at all these people. And we talk about that God is with all of us all the time, with you all the time, Monday through Sunday. But this is a reminder to us, perhaps with all the busyness of the week, we've forgotten that, that God is always with us. Uh, and so this idea is that we, when we live out our faith, we're supposed to let our light shine before others as God is illuminating God's presence with us this morning. And there's a song that, that speaks to this pretty clearly. Uh, have you heard the song called This Little Light of Mine? Yeah? yeah? Here's what we're going to do. Come on, come this way now. Come on. So, watch the cord again. Do not want tripping on the cord. Right up here at the front. Come on, go on the rug. Face the rest of the people. No, I meant standing, but that's okay. So you're going to lead all these people because we're going to help remind them to let their light shine, let their faith go this week. We're going to sing the first verse of this little light of mine, all right? I think if you don't know the words, I think you'll catch on very quickly, all right? Who wants to start us? <laughs> let your light shine. All right, I'll start us. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So there you go. If you can sing in front of all these people and they can sing in front, then you can do everything this week. You can live out your faith. Will you pray with me this morning? I invite the congregation to repeat out after me. Dear God, we thank you for being present here with us. And with us every day. Please help us to let our light shine and live out our faith. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning, everybody. I'm going to show my age a little bit this morning with the introductory section of the sermon, I, I was thinking back and I was remembering as a kid the most exciting part of the weekend, well, besides church of course, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the most exciting part of the weekend was watching this TV show called NFL Prime Time. In fact, NFL Primetime usually came on when we were eating dinner on the East Coast, so we'd record it on this thing called a VHS tape. Remember one of those? Uh, so we could watch it after and fast forward through the commercials. And why this was so exciting was this was a time before you could watch any uh, NFL game, before Sunday ticket, before the red zone, and you only got the local broadcast option. So living outside of Philadelphia, we, an NFC team, we mostly got the Eagles, so we very, very rarely got to see our beloved Packers. And so in, in watching the show at the, the end of the day in NFL prime time, uh, it, ran, it ran highlights from every single game, which back then was just incredible. I remember waiting with eager anticipation, so excited to see what Packers legends Brett Favre and my favorite Reggie White would dole out in the highlights to come. 
And it would be on NFL primetime, we'd, we'd learn the stories of the Sundays, which teams won, which comebacks came to fruition, which players unfortunately got hurt, and see all the big moments from across the league that had happened hours before. Now thinking back on it now, in, in 2023, it's, it's kind of comical. Wait, we had, to, we had to wait to find out something? It wasn't on my phone seconds after it happened? I mean, now I can see the Packer highlights almost instantaneously wherever I go, right, right in the palm of my hand. And if you're not a sports person, let me give you an equivalent. It's like when we used to wait for a radio station to play the song that we were really into at the moment, and we'd wait through all the other pop songs and hits and, and advertisements and DJs talking to finally get that one song we liked, versus now, you can literally play whatever song you want whenever you want, wherever you want. Certainly life is, is more instant, on demand, and personally cultivated just for us than it has ever been before. It's getting hard to remember what it used to be like, honestly. So then, how much more radical is God to us in this modern age? God is deliberate, not instantaneous. God is not interested in the, in the short-term, quick results. Rather, God's focused on long-term life change, that often it happens slowly and gradually. And perhaps most vexing for us all these days is that God's good news is not personally cultivated just for, for me. It's communal. Ministry is shared. We don't have direct control of, of everything in this church community that we are a part of. And that's the way that God wants it. I think this perspective is important for us to remember when we have the story this morning in the Gospel about the bridesmaids who are waiting for the bridegroom. Jesus has told us that five are wise and five are foolish. As the wise brought with them extra oil for their lamps. Now this is interesting, because I think often this gets misinterpreted when, when preached. We, we know from our, our summon, summon, summer sermon series on rest, Jesus doesn't want us burning the midnight oil. As we heard from Scripture, the summer rest is a, is a sacred gift from God. We don't need to be pulling an all-nighter in anticipation for Jesus' return. If anything, Jesus is saying, make sure to have plenty in reserve. To make sure that we are well rested. So that you'll be ready for the time of action when it finally arrives. Did you notice, everyone in this story, both the wise and the foolish, fell asleep as they waited. Keep awake is not an enemy of rest at all. Rather, it is a warning that as Christians, we are in this for the long haul. The kingdom of God is not an, an instant experience. It's going to take a lot of time, slowly building as, as hearts and minds are transformed for the better. But the bridegroom is belated. Jesus is saying the Son of God initiating the kingdom eternal, it's going to take longer than you think. So don't be running on fumes. Rather, great mov movements that change society, systems, and most importantly, people, they are a slow burn. Do what it takes to be prepared to run this marathon of faith and witness instead of slowly sprinting out of some kind of performative piety. Going back to candles, I, I think back to uh, the Lutheran summer camp that, that Stephanie and I worked with, where on the 4th of July week, we'd have a, a Vespers, a, a devotion using fireworks, actually, fitting of the occasion. It would start with a, a large candle being lit in the foreground where everyone was watching. And then another type of candle, a, a Roman candle, would, would fire up rapidly with its missile-like explosions, used to show a faith life that has lived in, in bits and spurts, jumping from one thing to another instead of being committed to something long-term. Then the, the loud boom and explosions from skyrockets 
represented the faith life that was, was loud and showy, but often had little substance beyond performance. Then the sparklers. Oh, the sparklers. So many sparklers. Well, they lit instantly, showing frantic brightness. But it wasn't sustainable in the long term. Eventually, burning out. Yet through all these various displays, the candle slowly burned. Constantly casting its light for all to see. Truly, that constant presence is an image for the faithful work of God. For God is always working for the good. Always building up the kingdom. Always transforming lives for the better. God's love is an ever-expanding force in this universe. Slowly. Deliberately. Powerfully. When we say our mission is to share the grace of Christ, we shouldn't expect an instantaneous result. It's not, it's not a magic spell, y'all. It, it, sharing the grace, yes, it, it changes hearts and it changes minds, but change is slow. It is intentional and deliberate work. This, this shared ministry that we take on together, it requires persistence. It is faithful work that we return to again and again, just as Jesus did in His years of ministry. When we say, and we proclaim in our, our statements and, and theological documents that we are committed to a world without racism, it's not going to fix itself. We know that we're in this for the long haul. It's not going to happen in one night. Rather, we keep having these conversations. We must not lose heart in sharing the Gospel of God who, who does create all people equal. Can it be frustrating? Can it get uncomfortable? Yes. But these are signs of progress. These are signs of change that God is bringing about. It means that we're getting somewhere, but it takes time. It involves us getting out of what we're used to and what we're comfortable in to make change happen. It requires persistence. As Dr. Martin Luther King preached, Human progress never rolls on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of dedicated individuals who are willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagnation. Every step toward the goal of God's justice requires dedication sacrifice, and struggle. We deliberately are working towards being committed to welcoming all people as a reconciling in Christ's congregation. And friends, I'm here to tell you, and I hope I'm not bursting a bubble, but just in case, this work is just beginning when we become RIC. Being RIC is not just a, a checkbox and we're done. Rather, this is a naming of a commitment that we're pledging to, that we will keep awake in our ministry of inclusivity, that we are proclaiming God's inclusive love all our life long, that the ministry of Jesus Christ invites all to the table. And we are committed to overcoming the divisions that fracture the sinless, sinful world no matter how long it takes. This really shouldn't be news to us. We see this in all our ministry, if you think about it. Each year we donate thousands, thousands of pounds of food. Not because we expect hunger to be over sometime soon, but rather if we don't keep faithfully doing this work, it never will end. We continue to give generously against the forces of systemic and pervasive poverty. We keep offering events in our community despite the world becoming seemingly more isolated. We press on to remove the stigmas of, of mental health and trauma. We are cultivating a safe space where hard yet uncomfortable and necessary conversations can be had. We persevere in prayer for peace even in times where a war is erupting. We persist in our witness despite a growing secularization in society. 
We keep awake in our ministry because we are in this for the long term. We are committed to growing this community, to supporting one another, and because we believe in a God of grace who works out in the world deliberately, communally, and has a lasting eternal effect. Hear the words from the prophet Amos today from our first reading. God despises the status quo that gets condoned in churches that prop up inequity and injustice. God takes no delight in empty ceremonies of a church that is not content to faithfully, repeatedly do the work that is needed for positive change. How did you hear it? God instead beckons the church to commit to the ministry of Christ all their life long. All for the change that is brought about slowly, deliberately, and intentionally. People of God do not be satisfied with quick and simple fixes that make us feel better but do not last. But instead, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. For water will win out. It will take time, but the forces of injustice will eventually erode. We don't know when God will bring the kingdom eternal into full fruition. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Persist in progress. Get your needed rest. Engage something that is unlike what so much of the world offers, a slow and steady presence that is committed to all things good. Through God, we believe, changing hearts and minds, it is possible. But we do not expect an overnight result. God has brought us into this collective witness for the benefit of others. And God calls us to be faithful in this work. Lasting positive change is a process. It is a valiant struggle. It is a faithful movement carried out by a church refusing to be complacent, refusing to give up on the ideals of God's kingdom to come. Yes, Lord. Together. As one. United in Christ, we commit the long term to the faithful work of sharing the grace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let them come to the Lord. 
except for the Lord. Sing. Come on, come on, come on. Very good. I invite the congregation to raise their right hand in this direction. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we give thanks for everyone who has served and defended our country and the values and freedom of justice that we hold so dear. Help us to be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardship endured by their families and friends so we may never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Be present with all those serving in the military today, O Lord. Though they are at war, let them live for the peace only known from You. Holy God, at a time when there's so much armed conflict, we pray that peace and prosperity for the lives of all prevails. Help us, Lord, to be worthy of our veterans' legacy and keep us mindful of their service that in all things we may live our lives in praise and thanksgiving to You, O God. Out of gratitude, we specifically ask that You bless these people before us today, whatever may come in their days ahead. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's share a sign of our thankfulness. Stay standing, stay standing. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, for whom we wait, come quickly to your people. Bring your salvation and center us in hope found only in you. Deepen our faith through meaningful worship and send us out with your justice and truth. Hear us, O oh God. Our God, for whom we watch, we glimpse your power in rushing water, in your beauty in the darkening night. Restore this creation and provide clean water to all people and animals. Save us from foolish, wasteful living. Hear us, O oh God. 
O God, for whom we long, let justice roll down like waters on all nations. Bless citizens with wise leaders. Save your children from war. We pray for the veterans of this community that they are supported and loved. Hear us, O God. O God, in whom we hope, we pray for all who are in need. Provide for those who experience homelessness or hunger. Support the under or unemployed. And comfort any who are suffering this day. This time we lift a lot of prayers aloud, especially in our hearts out loud or at home in the comments section. Hear us, O God. O God, for whom we listen, inspire the music ministry of our congregation. Fill our worship with songs to proclaim Your greatness. Help us to sing and dance with joy and tell boldly of Your salvation. Hear us, O God. O God, in whom we remain, we remember our loved ones who have died and now live anew. Bring comfort and assurance of new life to all who grieve. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts trusting in Your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour it upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. There is a place for you at this banquet. Come, at, come and feast at Jesus' table. All are welcome.
Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts of your abundance, we give, give thanks for your rich blessing. We may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad in the blessings of God, the Sovereign, the Savior, and the Spirit be with you today and always. God, go in peace. God is at work in you.
Change is scary, though. It always can be scary.